there are days when I wake up and I feel like something bad is going to happen. I'm filled with an overwhelming sense of dread. Something I can't name, I can't put my finger on. It just feels bad. And when I'm overcome with these kind of feelings, what I like to do is start to illustrate. I like to start to draw these feelings out. And to me, that is a pillar of my artwork, is this dread I cannot name. And so today, I just want to go over some of my process and some of my feelings that I go through when I'm creating this type of work. And in the background, I'm going to have some time lapses of a few of the pieces I've created while feeling this overwhelming sense of dread. And when drawing this feeling, I think the most important thing is to really observe how I feel, how it makes me feel. I feel dread is something that comes from deep in my chest. It comes from the middle of my body. It is a dark feeling. It is a suffocating feeling. It is a feeling of tightness and of anxiety. It is something that comes from the inside. It pushes its way out. And so if we look at this piece in the background here, when I was approaching this, I said to myself, well, I have this internalized feeling of dread. I have this internalized thing that is trying to force its way outwards, force its way out of me, and it is distorting the features that I'm trying to draw. It is elongating them. It is, you know, giving, pulling the jaw apart to look at the dark inside, right? To, to kind of get into that feeling that is deep at the core, right? This feeling of dread. I am elongating the features, the fingers, all these different elements that are just kind of sprouting outwards like branches. And to me, that represents the type of, you know, when you repress an emotion and it finds a way outwards regardless. That's what these kind of images and imagery show to me. And that's how I start to express this kind of emotion of dread. I add a red background to give the sense of unease, the sense of danger even. And that's just one way to approach it. I approached this piece very differently. I started off thinking, well, dread is everywhere. Dread is all encompassing. When I'm feeling it, it, it infects everything. And so I wanted this main figure, this big dark creature in the background to be touching almost all four corners of the page to really be like everywhere as far as the piece goes. And as it developed, I kind of went back to that core, almost explosive feeling of dread. I decided to kind of pare it down a little bit and then keep going with this idea that dread distorts. Dread is something from the inside that kind of pushes outwards, that is going to not only create this feeling of anxiety, but it's also going to, to go from within and push outwards. That is the kind of thought I have when I think of dread. I like to anchor the figure down with a black and make it so that it is truly just cemented onto the page. And then from there, I have these explosive reds coming from the aura of the figure, kind of representing this negativity pushing outwards and kind of infecting the world around them. There are speckles of white that kind of show that anchoring to reality that are you know speckled throughout the face and whatnot. But ultimately, this is a distorted figure. This thing has a place in space of its own that is in this place of fear. This is another example. Um, it's trying to incorporate humanity, trying to bring that human element into the mix because dread and fear is a human emotion that many people can relate to. And I try and bring these human figures into the work as well. I think something important about that is just expressing how fragile people are. That is part of where these feelings of dread come from for me is that I feel like when I am having these feelings of angst, of fear, of dread, it's because I'm afraid that there will be nothing after this. You know, I am afraid of the, that my actions are inconsequential, that, you know, the ego is dissolving, right? I think that it's one of those things where I am afraid it doesn't mean anything. And that's how I express this. Ultimately, I have this figure, um, you know, their hands are in their, on their head. That's like a very, um, kind of standard image in a lot of ways. It's like a person who's like freaking out. They have their hands in their head and their body is dissolving upwards. They're becoming nothing. And that fear of nothing to me is a driving factor behind dread. And I think of that when I try and create pieces like this. I think of these archetypal things that would make a person feel dread. And sometimes I shy away from those things because I think they're too generic. But, you know, in reality, they're some of the greatest tools we have are the shared experiences of humanity, of these hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years of dread we find in literature, in movies and art and things like that. You know, I think of 
the work of Emily Bronte in Wuthering Heights and how that changed my perspective on Dread. I think of the movie Lake Mungo and how afraid and how uncomfortable I felt while watching that and how that changed my perspective on Dread in general. And so I think even if an idea may be, you know, overdone or trite, like I draw a lot of skulls, I draw a lot of like Grim Reapers and things like that, they can be re-examined. I don't think it's about creating one thing that's dreadful. I think it's about realizing that everything on some level can be made dreadful. Everything can be um, personified and therefore everything can have this human element of dread. And for this last piece, I kind of tie it back into this because I don't like to draw portraits often. I don't do it a lot because I just think it's something that's overdone. I think that a lot of people do portraits. I see a lot of them online. I, you know, I just don't think it's something that I'm usually interested in. But I wanted to examine a portrait through the lens of dread. And I think this is kind of a core thing for me too, is that it doesn't have to be a difficult idea. It doesn't have to be something that's like an insane concept or whatever. I think really it's a, a, an act of catharsis, right? It's like running or going to the gym or doing something for yourself that makes you feel better. And if I can take a portrait that I think would normally just be an easy task and I can give it this kind of dark tone that to me is exciting. That to me is like something that I can really enjoy and that will help ref like relieve these feelings of dread. And I think that's what's important to me during this process is that I am finding a way to express these feelings of dread. I am looking at material that is has been done a million times and I'm able to kind of give it my own twist and my own spin and to take this object or this concept and distort it. And so for this piece in particular, I draw this face. I draw a very normal face for the most part. It's very dark. It's very sad. It has kind of this empty stare. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to give it this crushing feeling. I, I think that dread in a lot of ways is a feeling that oppresses you. It is something that infects you. It is something that surrounds you. And so when I drew this face, I knew I wanted it to be kind of like a normal portrait with all the, you know, bells and whistles. And then I wanted it to be surrounded by blackness. I wanted it to be surrounded by this kind of void of space, right? I didn't want to, I wanted to shade the face. I wanted to create a lot of different um, textures and things like that and just actually create like a, a almost like a semi-realistic face and then I wanted to surround it with this darkness to kind of it kind of express this feeling of dismay of terror right and so to achieve this what I did was that I left the rest of the black flat I didn't want to add any texture to it I didn't want to add anything I wanted it to be like a hole I wanted it to be like a part of the piece that you cannot escape it is almost like a tar pit and then surrounding that black is the red the danger the terror right so you have this kind of core human element in the center and then you have this black surrounding it the void and then you have the red, the danger on the outside. And I think this kind of encapsulates a lot of what dread is. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. This is just a video I wanted to make because it's just a, a feeling that I use a lot in my art. Um, thank you for the 20,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Um, and thank you to all my Patreon subscribers. Um, you guys are really keeping the channel going and I appreciate that. I'll be updating the end credits this week. So keep an eye out for the next video if you've recently joined the page. And as always, thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.